So take a look at this. So much money, he needed a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow. That would be the largest recorded win in legal sports betting history. Save you money. Save you money. This is the legendary gambler who repeatedly beats Las Vegas. Imagine placing bets worth tens of millions, confident that even if the chips fall the wrong way, you're still coming out on top. Because that's precisely what this guy's been doing for the past seven years. And it's not just luck. It's a calculated strategy fueled by clever math, meticulous planning, and sheer determination. To me, a setback's just a setup for a comeback. You know, you win some, you lose some, sometimes you get rained out, and you put your big boy and big girl britches on and go to the next one. Who is this man? And how does he manage to outwit giants like MGM, Caesars, Fangio, and even DraftKings? Join me as we unravel the tale of a humble furniture salesman who beat the house for a jaw drop in $75 million. Uh, during my, the uh, early years of, of my life, the first uh, 18 years, I lived in a room with uh, twin beds. My brother George, my brother George, was my uh, roommate, soulmate. Despite a $300 million net worth now, Max's upbringing was quite the opposite. To understand the man fully, we must go back to the beginning, because his journey kicked off in Starkville, Mississippi. Born to George and Angela McInvale, Max's roots were humble. Financially, life was always a struggle, shaping his early experiences. Experiences that installed values that would later become integral to his character. My parents both embodied from day one the fact that the essence of living is giving. We went to church every Sunday that was uh, mandatory and it was a uh, great foundational theory there in my life. After attending high school in Dallas, Texas, and a brief stint at the University of North Texas, where he was first introduced to gambling, Mac found himself working in a convenience store. But fate took a turn when he was fired. One day the store owner walked in. He said, well, son, I'm gonna help you change. And he said, boy, you're fired. Seeing it not as a setback, but as an opportunity to reinvent himself, Max started his foray into the furniture business where he secured a job at a furniture store in Dallas. In 1981, with just $5,000 in life savings, a pickup truck, and a newfound partner in life, Linda, Mac did something he'd never done before. The couple moved to Houston determined to open gallery furniture in an abandoned mobile home park next to the freeway. They even slept at the site, an abandoned mobile park home, because they didn't have insurance and couldn't afford to have any Anything stolen. Every Saturday, the couple drove to Dallas to pick up the next week's furniture load. It was a promising start, but in 1983, problems started with sales taking a dive. Despite this, Mac made a crucial decision and invested his last $10,000 in a TV commercial. This was a pivotal move that would later determine his betting strategy. Unhappy with the initial commercial, at the last moment, Mac stepped up in front of the camera delivering an energetic improvised sales pitch that included the now famous slogan. So as I was searching for a punchline after about three hours, I didn't have one. I had the day's receipts in my pocket, so I was desperate. I reached in my pocket, pulled the money out, and said, gallery furniture will save you money. The commercial was a hit, and his sales of furniture went through the roof. It was the start of a gamble that would later make him a household name in Houston. Throughout the early 1980s, having appeared in commercials wearing a mattress costume, Mac became a local sensation. It was during this period of time that his nickname, Mattress Mac, was coined. This was the name that he would be known for for the rest of his life, and eventually make him the envy of Las Vegas sportsbooks. For two long decades, he poured his heart and soul into the business. I would drive all the way to Dallas, Meet, meet my friend at his store, buy ten another uh, ten or twelve thousand dollars worth of merchandise, put it in the truck, bring it back down, and sell it in Houston on right. Sunday. Turning a hundred thousand square foot facility on the North Freeway into a treasure trove of twenty million dollars worth of furniture. But then, on the twenty-first of May, two thousand and nine, disaster struck. Just days before Memorial Day, a weekend that spells gold for furniture retailers, gallery furniture burst into flames. But we begin with breaking news tonight from North Houston. The Houston Fire Department has been called out to a fire at Gallery Furniture. When we arrived, very intense flames. You could even feel it through the car window. That's how intense it was. But we have seen uh, the smoke diminish. The flames have gone down somewhat. But again, firefighters working this still very active. It took 150 firefighters to battle the blaze with flames shooting 40 feet into the air. Even the Houston Astros interrupted their baseball game to showcase the inferno on the Jumbotron screen. It was pure chaos. Now as the smoke cleared, gallery furniture had been reduced to ash with its warehouse in ruins. 
With his future hanging in the balance, Mac faced a tough choice. Should he rebuild or take the insurance payout and call it quits? The decision weighed heavily, not just on him, but on every employee he depended on their jobs. This is all we have. This is it. This is how we do. In a moment of shared uncertainty, they joined hands and prayed. What followed was nothing short of a miracle. Picking up furniture from vendors across the country tomorrow and get that furniture in here, we'll be delivering furniture somehow tomorrow. So we're gonna continue on. With no physical space to store or sell their items, suppliers pledged to deliver new furniture the very next day, and then a call from the local bank. A fully operational, move-in, ready furniture warehouse in Sugarland was offered. The generous banker was helping out, recognizing Max's years of goodwill. Within hours, Gallery Furniture had defied the odds. They sold $300,000 worth of products in the day after the fire, and the North Freeway location gradually reopened in phases over the next several months. Customers flooded in, not just for the furniture, but for the man behind it all, as Mattress Mac once reflected. Now, although Mac recovered his money in the aftermath of the fire, he found himself reflecting on how fragile his business had become. What if he didn't have the support of these amazing Houstonians? The fire was a wake-up call, a cosmic nudge telling him to hedge his bets. And upon this very idea, the bet in Mac was born. The furniture tycoon turned Las Vegas legend found himself dealing in a different kind of numbers game. This fiery episode had forced him to see the importance of having a few aces up his sleeve. So what do we know about Max betting? What was his clever and ingenious strategy? And what was the almost fatal mistake that he made? Well, here it is. The year is 2012, and the man we fondly know as Mattress Mac is about to unveil a betting strategy that's nothing short of ingenious. He decides to make his first bet close to home by betting on sports teams in Texas. The stage is set and the Houston Texans are gearing up to face off against the Dallas Cowboys. It was a showdown like never before. So what does Mac do? Well, he crafts a master plan tied to the NFL season. He promises his customers a gallery furniture refunds on their purchases if the Houston Texans manage to win more than 10 games in the season. Now that's a bold move, right? This wasn't just a bet, rather it was a bold gamble. Lo and behold, the Texans exceed expectations, winning more than 10 games, and true to his words, Mattress Mac refunds an estimated $600,000 to customers who had made qualifying purchases. This promotion marked the beginning of a series of high-profile promotional bets that Mattress Mac would become famous for in the years following. Now, the reality behind what happened here was simple. Mac invested his customers' money on the alternate outcome. If the game had not come through, only his customers, and not him, were at a loss. Clearly, a businessman who knows how to turn a potential loss into a strategic win. But this moment of sunshine was short-lived as yet again another trouble begun. 2014 rolled in and suddenly logistical issues and supply shortages hit gallery furniture like a storm. The store that once bustled with life had now empty shelves and the toll on Mattress Mac and his team was heavy. Now fast forward to a pivotal moment in 2014. Mattress Mac was shaken by a big betting loss that not only shook him but his entire business to the very core. In the world of high stakes wagers, Mac had a strategy. Either he loses a bet and keeps all the promotional proceeds or wins the wager and uses his money to pay back his customers. A high stakes game where the outcome determines the fate of his wallet and the promises he made to his customers. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Mattress Mac wasn't always hedging his bets. In 2014, during an uninsured promotion tied to the Super Bowl, he rolled the dice without a safety net. He didn't place the counter bet. The game was a face off between the Seahawks and Broncos and, well, things didn't go as planned. Mattress Mac, in a move brimming with confidence, promised refunds on purchases of $6,000 or more to each customer if the Broncos emerged victorious. But fate took a different turn as the Seahawks seized the victory. With the Seahawks upsetting the Broncos, Mac found himself sweating it out on a treadmill during the game. The nerves were real, and the outcome was a painful $8 million loss. But this wasn't just an $8 million loss. They ended up refunding a whopping $13 million. Why? Why, you may ask. Well, Seattle scored a safety on the first play and from there it was a downhill slide. Linda, in a candid way, admitted that they didn't fully grasp the concept of hedging back then. The Seahawks game became a defining moment, a lesson learned the hard way. Mac had learned not to gamble again, he must place the hedge bet. So having learned his lesson, things seemed to be going relatively well. Life, for Mac, 
his wife, Linda, and his gallery furniture business seem to be finding its feet yet again. But an even greater problem was lurking around the corner. Breaking news, the newest information on Hurricane Harvey is coming out right now. In 2017, Hurricane Harvey swept across the United States, wreaking havoc and causing immense loss. Despite the storm hitting his business hard, Max showcased the true spirit of compassion. In the face of adversity, he flung open his doors at the gallery furniture stores, transforming them into shelters for 800 victims seeking refuge in the flooding. Once again, he proved himself as a pillar of support for the community. Amid the chaos, he took a financial hit but earned national acclaim for his selfless act. The same year saw Mattress Mac not only weathering storms, but diving into the unpredictable world of sports betting once more. In a bold move, he made a deal where customers would snag free mattresses if the Houston Astros triumphed over the Los Angeles Dodgers in the MLB's World Series. When the Astros clinched the victory, he lost a staggering $10 million worth of mattresses. But here's the twist. He reveled in these high stakes bets, admitting that he gets bored with stability. Mac definitely was a man with a daring mindset, a man who thrives on the thrill of uncertainty. Even though he doubled down on his strategy, his bet tumbled, leading to refunds for customers. Despite the setbacks, Mattress Mac didn't shy away from the million dollar sports bets. In the 2019 World Series, he flew across the country by private jet, placing a bet on Astros victories in three different states. Well, it was quite the moment, a historic moment, as Mattress Mac walked through the center of his casino and placed a $3.5 million bet on the Houston Astros to win the 2019 World Series. That bet, now the biggest sports bet in Mississippi state history. However, when the Astros fell to the Washington Nationals, he faced another hefty loss, tallying at least $11.6 million in wages. His gambling ventures extended beyond baseball, reaching into the NFL playoffs, the Kentucky Derby, and the Super Bowl. Now, what's truly remarkable is Mattress Mac's philanthropic spirit remained steadfast amongst the highs and lows of his betting ventures. When a tropical storm flooded Houston in 2019, what did he do? He once again flung open his doors of gallery furniture, offering shelter to evacuees and raising $106,000 for those affected. Now, beyond opening his doors to the affected victims, during the 2020 COVID pandemic, he distributed thousands of free masks to Houstonians, addressing the shortage in the community. And in 2021, when the Texas power crisis hit, he opened his doors yet again, providing shelter to those impacted. Again and again, Matt kept demonstrating kindness despite his own personal losses. With COVID existing throughout the whole world in 2019 to 2021, Mac's business witnessed an all-time low, and the dream to win big continued to slip further and further away from reach. With revenues down and the business almost coming to a halt, Mac decides to give bet in one last but heavy try. It all unfolded at Minute Maid Park, where Mattress Mac, the self-proclaimed huckster, leaped for joy in his front row seats as the Houston Astros secured a 4-1 victory over the Philadelphia Phillies in Game 6 of the World Series. But this was no spur-of-the-moment decision. It was a six-month ride that had kicked off in a Louisiana restaurant's parking lot, where Mattress Mac had confidently placed a $3 million bet on the Astros to win at odds of 10-1 to using Caesars Sportsbook mobile app. As as the Astros triumphed, Chief Operating Officer for Caesars Digital couldn't help but announce the staggering reality. What can we say? We just wrote the biggest check in sports betting history to Mattress Mac for $30 million. But this wasn't just a one-time gamble. Mattress Mac played the betting game strategically. That $3 million bet with Caesars was his largest, but it wasn't his only high-stakes move. Throughout the summer, he'd added around $7 million more in bets on the Astros across various sports books with an average payout of odds of 750 raking in a cool 75 million dollars needless to say mattress max succeeded he won big time having placed his largest hedge bet ever mac was awarded 75 million dollars in total sports betting payouts the highest total in sports betting history the poor texan boy turned furniture seller was eventually now in the big league but there's much to learn about mattress mac even after his massive win because he hasn't stopped in 2023 mattress mac dived into another bold promotion this time he offered a full refund for customers who splurged five thousand dollars or more on furniture if the astros managed to repeat their trial 
triumph feat. The stakes were high, but so were the potential returns. As fate would have it, the Astros fell short on their World Series return. However, the beauty of this gamble lies in the fact that Mattress Mac had already sold around $80 million worth of furniture by that point. The best part? None of it even had to be paid back. And this is what Mattress Mac will be forever remembered for, his calculative, ingenious, no-lose betting strategy.